did you guys see an ad before the video started? That means your girl is monetized! <laughs> So I'm making this video to answer the question, how long does it actually take to get monetized? Is it something that you can do quickly or do you have to toil and toil for years? I'm also gonna give you three things that I wish I knew when I started. So stay tuned for the video. Hi, my name is Temi. If you're new here, I make art related content. And today is the day that I'm gonna share some tips on how you can get monetized quicker. Firstly, I would like to say thank you so much for all the support. You don't know how much your comments mean to me. It's honestly amazing to even get to this point. It just feels so surreal. So thank you. Shout out to all of you. I appreciate your support so, so, so much. So you may have stumbled on this video and you have no idea what monetization even is. YouTube monetization means that now you have the chance to make money through YouTube putting ads on your videos. So I've heard, especially from the start, that the money that you get from YouTube ad revenue is like peanuts. <laughs> So I'm not holding my breath, but it's a start. And I really wanted to share this milestone with you guys. For me, being monetized is amazing because I want to be able to upgrade my content. I want to be able to upgrade my equipment and just keep improving. Right now, I still film on my phone. I need to get a microphone. In fact, right now I'm using my AirPods. Hopefully the money I can get from monetization can just help me to build my channel and just to make my videos even better for you guys. At the moment to get monetized on YouTube, there are two things that you need. You need at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours so the subscriber count is pretty self-explanatory but the watch hour is how many hours people are spending watching your content so 4,000 watch hours in total is 240,000 minutes watch of your content at my point of monetization I had around 5,800 subscribers and 4,300 watch hours and I'm not going to be like one of those YouTubes that makes you stay till the end before they even give you what you came for I'm just going to tell you it took me one day to get monetized and I know that probably sounds crazy but by that I mean it took me a day from the point where I had fulfilled the criteria to when I was actually approved but to fulfill the criteria it actually took me a year if you scroll on my channel you see videos that are older than a year but let me explain my YouTube story a little bit for you I started YouTube back in 2011 and I uploaded my first video which was a Jesse J drawing between 2011 and 2016 I only uploaded 11 videos so I would go a bit of time and I'll do a couple videos a year and then not do anything I wasn't taking YouTube seriously at all I was just using it to supplement my Instagram and my blog and finally in 2019 I came back to YouTube I had a thousand subscribers but it was basically like starting over most people that had subscribed previously had definitely forgotten me it was three years since I uploaded my last video and no one was checking for me. So this time I came back to YouTube with a strategy. I uploaded my welcome to my channel and my art story video and then I immediately started uploading speed drawing content and bullet journal plan with me video. So at the point when I restarted my channel, my watch hours were zero, so I had to build the 4,000 watch hours which I was able to do over the past year. Interestingly enough, it was very tough for me to build my watch hours and in the past 28 days, I managed to get nearly half of the watch hours that I needed for monetization. So it just goes to show that if you're struggling with it at the moment, that doesn't mean that you will forever be struggling with it. So yes, it took me a year in total to hit the count. In that year, I gained nearly 5,000 subscribers and I gained the 4,000 hours of watch time. And I mentioned that it took me one day to get approved. Funny enough, it said because of the current climate that it might take longer to get approved. But I think my approval came quickly because I already had an AdSense account set up. But before YouTube had the 4,000 watch hours requirement and when I'd surpassed 1,000 subscribers, I was invited to be a YouTube partner. However, when I left YouTube for a period of time and came back, that was all gone. So again, it was like I was starting afresh in 2019. So now I'm going to share three things that I wish I knew when I came back on this YouTube journey that I believe would have helped me get to monetization quickly. And I'm sure it will help you. But I'm not going to be like those YouTubers that just say, oh, yeah, make sure your thumbnail is good, your title. I'm already going to assume you're doing all those things. I'm going to assume that you've got good content and don't just think you've got good content because you're the one making it. You need to look at your content objectively. If you're even getting bored editing it, maybe change something up. I'm going to assume that you've got good content, your titles are on point, your thumbnail is eye-catching, your description is full of information. I'm going to assume all of that because there's no point listening to my tips if those foundational things aren't already set in stone. 
things like your title and thumbnail you probably already know that it helps your click-through rate and one thing that I've learned is that the higher your click-through rate is the better because that's when YouTube starts suggesting your content to more people and because more people want to click on it it's just a win-win situation. The last thing I'm going to assume is that you're consistent so you can't have just three videos over the past three years and think oh my gosh why am I not getting monetized? For me, I named 2020 to be my year of consistency. I use a content calendar to schedule all the post ideas and it always changes and that's perfectly fine. I think making a plan is half the battle and it really encourages you to stay consistent. When you think with the end in mind, when you've got your final goal so clear in your mind, it's going to encourage you to be consistent. The days that you're tired after work, I've got a full-time job myself. The days that you're tired after work, you're going to put the effort to actually produce something because you've got the end in mind. Make sure that you're focused about your goals and you will remain consistent it's not going to be easy you might miss a few upload days but that's fine if you've got a schedule you tell your audience that you're going to upload a video every Sunday people expecting a video every Sunday so that gives you a natural push to be able to keep up with it Also, new people that come to your channel, when they see that your last video was within the last week, within the last month, they're encouraged that they might get new content soon. So they're more likely to subscribe because they can see that the potential for new information is there. So definitely keep that in mind. Consistency is, I guess, quite underrated, but it's so key. You should aim to be uploading at least one video a week. I know it's hard. It was very hard for me at the start, but you just got to do it. With those assumptions in mind, I'm now going to give you my three tips. My first tip will help you to hit your watch hours and that is to make your video as long as possible. So I'm not saying stretch it out and don't give any value. You need to make sure that every minute you're given value because you want your watch time for each video to be good. What I did was I make a lot of bullet journal content and other plan with me videos that I see on YouTube are around 16 minutes long but my plan with me videos were around four minutes. You can see how you can improve your content by giving even more value rather than rushing it to get all the information out in two to three minutes. What I did was I then thought about different ways that I could share more value and so that I could make my videos longer. You want to make your videos longer for a few reasons. Firstly, YouTube itself values longer videos. They are more likely to promote longer videos because for for an obvious reason of it keeps people longer on the app. So YouTube itself likes it, the audience likes it because they get to connect with you more and if they're getting more information it's just a bonus. And finally, if monetization is a goal of yours, then you want to make your videos at least 10 minutes long. Videos less than 10 minutes, you can only put an ad at the start and at the end of a video. But when a video is longer than 10 minutes, you can put ads in the middle of the video. Of course you don't want to annoy your audience by putting 100 billion ads, of course not. But it's definitely something to keep in mind. So my tip here is look in your niche, look at the types of videos or the video idea that you want to produce, look at the duration of those video ideas and tailor your video accordingly. Don't get me wrong, you don't want to make a video extensively long for no reason. If you can get the information out in two minutes, then do it in two minutes. But you want to pour as much value into each video and the longer you can make it, the better it will be for you in the long run. My next tip is to utilise your other social media. One thing that I know helped me grow my YouTube channel is the fact that my other social media channels were also growing. I am getting people coming from my Instagram, I'm getting people coming from my TikTok, I'm getting people coming from Facebook. You want to be able to diversify where your audience are coming from. That's what can really help you. Okay, you might say you don't have any followers on there, and that's cool, but using things like hashtags on Instagram makes you more searchable. Join in Facebook groups in your particular niche, you're connected with like-minded people and you can share your content when people want to find out more then they know where to go and then they'll come over to your YouTube channel. This is such an underrated tip because most people just kind of do it in silos but I found what's personally helped me is to also get people coming over. And of course, on those social media channels, you can't just post a link and go because I promise you nobody's going to come. You need to make your content also curated to each social media channel so that you can tease the content a little bit and then bring people over. You need to post things that are native to each channel. For example, you need to upload a shorter version of your video or a sped up version, whatever you want to do, depending on your niche. And you can upload those natively into each of these apps. If you just put a link to a YouTube video, it's easy for other people to scroll past it. But of course, 
course, on whichever tweet or Facebook post, if you're allowed to, as per group guidelines, then just add the YouTube link and people can come directly there. Some underrated social media apps as well. Reddit is fantastic. Twitter is fantastic. So in conclusion for that tip, make sure that you're utilizing each app properly. Make sure that you're creating native content. Don't just upload something to Instagram and then upload it to TikTok and think it'll be fine on TikTok. It really won't be. Each of these social media channels require something different. So you need to adapt your content to each of these channels, upload the content natively to those channels and then direct people over to your YouTube. This isn't going to be easy. I'm not going to lie to you. I spend a lot of time every single week making sure that I have content everywhere all the time. <laughs> it's not going to be easy, but you can do it. I believe in you. And my final tip for you today is to invest in yourself. So that can mean anything for you. That can mean paying for a course so that you can learn to edit better. That can mean outsourcing things so that you can spend more time on things that you actually want to do. That could mean upgrading your equipment. For me, I used to film with my iPhone 7, which only had 32 gig of storage. And you know the way iPhones are, those 32 gig really just means you've got like 28 gig. When you've got all your apps and all your phones, you basically have three gig of space left on the phone. Every time I tried to re record a speed drawing on my phone, it would cut off every half an hour. Imagine doing a seven hour drawing and every half an hour I had to stop and transfer it to my laptop. It was so tedious. At that point I said, okay, I need to upgrade my equipment. And exactly the same with my MacBook. My MacBook, again, didn't have good storage. Editing was a pain, so I upgraded to an iMac. Of course, take things in their stride. Do what you can at each point that you can afford to to do it but I found that that was something that made a massive difference for me if you want to be consistent but all the content is taking so much longer because of limitations of your equipment I would say upgrade the equipment and of course with all of that it's just kaizen continuous improvement don't think when you do all of this then that's it you're going to grow tomorrow you need to put effort so that you're making something better each time try to be better with each video and that's what will really help you with continual improvement Investing in yourself could also mean getting a team, outsourcing some other things not related to your video that will help you do your video quicker. It might mean spending less time doing social events so that you can spend more time on your YouTube channel. And that's completely fine. It's just depending on your specific goals and just do what's good for you. So with all the tips I've shared, these are things that I wish I knew. It would have helped me from when I decided to go back onto YouTube. And I really hope it helps you too. So please let me know what you think down in the comments. If you're a small channel, feel free to support each other down in the comments and please like this video it really helps me out and subscribe i'll see you on my next video goodbye